Welcome to this daily devotion for Wednesday, February 23rd, 2021. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox and offer this daily devotion to you as a way that we can grow together in love of God and love of neighbor. Center yourself, take a deep breath, and let us hear the invocation, inviting God into this time and space. O oh God, whose promises are true, Help me to never stagger in disbelief at those promises, but to claim them as my own. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Our theme this week is What God Has Promised, and our theme psalm is Psalm 119, picking up in verse 38. Confirm your promise to your servant, the promise of that is for all those who honor you. Remove the insults that I dread because your rules are good. Look at how I desire your precepts. Make me live by your righteousness. May God bless the reading of the psalm today. Confirm. You know, we pray. There, there Again, there, there are hundreds, if not thousands of promises throughout the scripture that God makes to humanity, individuals, and to communities. And we need confirmation. We need to know that those promises are true. And if we read enough and we experience enough, we know those promises are true. And take some time. You know, remove the insults that I dread, those things that come, you know, from other people or from us uh, inside. You know, God, where are you? What's happening? Why are you doing this to me? All those kind of things. And look and see where, you know, where is hindsight is twenty twenty. Being able to look back and see where they are, then it clears us to see where God is and where God will be. But if you don't take the time to reflect, I meet with a spiritual director once a month and in preparation for that meeting, you know, it, it kind of makes me, I don't have to, but it makes me take some time every month to go back to reflect over the last month. Where have I seen God? Where haven't I seen God? How is it with my soul? What ways have I grown? What ways have I grown apart? Where am I struggling? Where am I growing? Th those are questions that I ask on a, on a regular basis and at least take time every month to kind of go through reflectively. Because if you don't ever spend that time, where is God? Where has God been? And then you get into this time of disorientation, this time of darkness, this time of pandemic, this time of cancer, this time of loss, this time of grief, this kind time of addiction, whatever you're going through, it's going to be hard to get out. You can get out. You can. Because you can cry out, God, save me, and God will save you. I truly believe that. And there will be a community of people around you, I pray, that will support you through that. That's why we get together in a church. But it's so much easier if you're clear on where God has been. And it's so much easier understanding God's will and trying to discern God's will for your life, not for other people's life, for your life. If you've already seen where God is and know where God is. Our other scripture reading today comes from the uh, letter to the Romans chapter 4 starting in verse 13 or 16 excuse me that's why the inheritance comes through faith so that it will be on the basis of god's grace in that way the promise is secure for all of abraham's descendants not just those who are related by the law but also for those who are related by the faith of abraham who is the father of us all as it is written, I have appointed you to be a father of many nations. So Abraham is our father in the eyes of God, whom he had faith. The God who gives life to the dead and calls things that don't exist into existence. When it was beyond hope, he had faith in the hope that would come to the father of many nations in keeping with the promise God spoke to him. That's how many descendants you will have. 
Without losing faith, Abraham, who was nearly 100 years old, took into account his own body, which was as good as dead, and Sarah's womb, which was also dead. He didn't hesitate with a lack of faith in God's promise, but he grew strong in faith and gave God the glory. He was fully convinced that God was able to do what he promised. God bless the reading today. Okay, that story of Abraham and Sarah, uh, Abram and Sarai, it's a beautiful story because for all accounts, they could never have children. And yet God said, you will be the father of many nations. And we know they did. They had biological children, but there could have been other ways they could have become parents, of course. And again, it's it's just a, it's a testimony. And you see it throughout scripture that if God says this will happen, it will happen. Now, I mean, we can all read that and we can read, yes, God's promise that we'll all have children. And, and we know that that's not true. Uh, and so we have to be careful how we interpret these promises. Uh, but, you know, for me and my wife, Jennifer and I, when we got married, we really believed that God had placed that promise on our lives. Uh, and we went about it in some ways uh, that were pretty painful, very truthfully. And didn't work out. Instead, perhaps, of just truly trusting God, and I'm not saying we can't trust God with medicine and all of that kind of stuff. And and um, no, I, I mean, God's given all of these things for us, and I, and I don't think we did anything wrong. But we didn't know what God had in store for us. We didn't. We believed in that promise, and it came true. We became parents, uh, three beautiful children. But it wasn't the expected way. <laughs> it wasn't what we were expecting. And very truthfully, in, in my mind, it's, it's so much better than if we had done it our way. And, and over and over again, I mean, that's my, that's my reality, that God's way is, is always better. Our next reading comes from Open Mind, Open Heart by Thomas Keating. All true prayer is based on the conviction of the presence of the Spirit in us and of the Spirit's unfailing and continual inspiration. Every prayer in this sense is a prayer of the Spirit. Still, it seems more accurate to reserve the term prayer in the Spirit for that prayer in which the inspiration of the Spirit is given directly to our spirit without the intermediary of our own reflections or acts of will. In other words, the Spirit prays in us and we consent. The traditional term for this kind of prayer is contemplation. Good old Thomas. It's always good for uh, some contemplative talk there. I'm not a I'm, I'm not a logic driven person. Uh, I'm a I'm a feeling type. If you uh, believe or 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 like the Jungian archetypes, uh, F type. Uh, as opposed to a thinking type, a feeling type, as opposed to a thinking type. And uh, so I interpret everything by by emotions, which is problematic in a lot of ways, but uh, that's how I interpret every, everything. Uh, but I know a lot of people are are, are, are thinking types and, and you you try to try to 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 think through everything. But regardless, whether you're trying to process things logically or emotionally, you still try to control it. And what Thomas is saying is sometimes there's uncontrolled prayer, contemplation, meditation, where you are just open to what the Spirit prays in you and for you and through you. And that allows a clarity when it comes to understanding God's promises, God's will, God's call. In a way that acts, you know, when, when I got a phone call, I think it was around 3 p.m. Jennifer was sleeping on a Tuesday in August out of the blue with, with zero expectation that said, I know, you know, 
Selena has a brother. We have to move him tomorrow. Can you take him? He'll be at your house at noon. If I had stopped and prayed my my emotional or logical prayers, if I had stopped and made a, a list of pros and cons, or woke Jennifer up and we had, you know, we really discussed it, you know, what, do we have enough money for this? Are we ready for this? You know, Selena was living at a, a children's home. She wasn't in our house. Our house was not prepared for children. We were both working full time. Would we be ready for this? Uh, and the answer is no. <laughs> uh, but what we did is I woke Jennifer up and we prayed and we we knew because the prayer wasn't us. The prayer was God saying, this is the promise. So we said, yeah, I mean, almost instantaneously without hesitation, without thought, because it was the spirit moving in us. And I have lots of different stories about that. And, and I hope you do too. It's not always about you. It's not about you. It's my favorite Dr. Phil thing. It's not about you. <laughs> it's about what God has in store for you. And sometimes God gives you the words and the feelings when you can't. Today we pray for those in leadership. Tragedy after tragedy, uh, national crisis after national crisis. It, it's it's got to be tiring. Uh, it's tiring for us, but it, it's got to be tiring for leaders. And uh, and it's tiring for church leaders. I know so many pastors. And, and yes, I mean, there are people all over the spectrum at umcnl.com. Uh, just umcnl. <laughs> uh, if you want to connect with us, umcnl.com. But uh, at our church, you know, there are people in all different spectrums, all different understandings, all different opinions. Uh, but I feel like we have created a community or are trying to create a community where you know, we, we're being safe, that we're, we're taking things into consideration. We're working together as, as groups of people to, to make these decisions. And, and, and so many of our colleagues, so many clergy in, in our area are, are just bombarded with hatred and, and, and fear and anxiety. And why aren't you doing this? Why are you doing this? And we're going to lose clergy this year, friends. Uh, we're going to lose good community leaders, good political leaders. We're going to lose teachers. We're going to lose firefighters. We're going to lose police officers. We're going to lose military men and women. We're going to lose people who lead. Because sometimes those of us who don't lead don't follow very well and are just mean. And so I don't care what you think about any of our leaders. You pray for them diligently. And I have, I'm not just saying, you know, because this, that, or the other thing, or I like the particular leadership that we have right now. No, I have always prayed for all of our leadership everywhere. Even leaders of other countries that I don't particularly like, even leaders of our country that I haven't particularly liked or community who I don't think are particularly good people. I'm not speaking about our community. I don't know anybody well enough to say that, but in my past experience, because leading is difficult. And even those of us who are in leadership, we pray for each other. And you can lead wherever you are. As Christ has called you to. And I pray for you. Let us be in prayer. Lord, we thank you for those courageous enough to follow your call into leadership. We are all called to be servant leaders to this world. Allow us to be patient with one another, to persevere through times of disorientation and trouble, and to love one another as you've loved us. We pray this in the name of the only God who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. Friends, until tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>